Let's check it out. Let's see. We are live on Twitch. We should be going live on sensor tube and we're live on sensor tube and the rumble should kick in within the next few seconds nice and we'll wait until uh, notifications go out until rumble kicks in checking the sound because we're recording on a lapel mic and uh hopefully we're gonna have a nice chill stream because today's monday morning and we're doing book readings right let's see yeah sensor tube is in twitch is in and we're just waiting on rumble fun we had a good stream yesterday map stream yeah and rumble has kicked in hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream today today is november 6 2023 Mac man salutations hope you're doing well on sensor tube bronson maniac on sensor tube good afternoon good afternoon and everyone and keanu weaver on sensor tube hey chicho how are you doing well thank you very much sensor tube people kicked in right away today uh way way earlier than uh what do you call it uh twitch and uh rumble kicked in Eagles and cycling salutations. Hi from sensor tube salutations to sensor tube. And we got pork cooked, pork cooked salutations from Twitch. Kitty cats were sleeping and they just woke up and I didn't open the door to the patio. Via is gonna go crazy. I might have to take a little walk away and open that patio door for him. Elder God, 6 November, 2023. Let's read, let's read. Gang, I'm Chicho. Today is the 6th of November, and we're going to continue doing our book readings, right? We've read nine books so far. We picked 21 to read. We do a little mathematics. We've got 12 more to go, right? <laughs> Micro twist. Politics. Let's keep it on politics. On yesterday's stream, we talked a tremendous amount of politics, and I'm uploading a ton of politics videos, little short segments right now. And... We do have political readings here left, so maybe we'll do political readings. Temporary peace. Salam, brother. Salam from Rumble. Salutations. Louis on sensor tube. Sensor tube gang. Sensor tube gang. <laughs> Anti socialist behavior. Salutations on Twitch. MTL beat. Salutations. Very nice sweater. Thank you. I got two of these. This is my fall winter sweater. I wear these two a lot. When one's dirty, being washed, waiting to get washed, I bring out the other one and wear it. It's just cozy. It's great for reading. Wow. This is my like a research reading sweater. All right. So fantastic. Fantastic. Gang, I'm going to do my little quick little intro thing I'm going to here. And then we're going to get into the readings because let's lose ourselves in some literature. All right. Gang, we're on Patreon, Substack, Subscribe Star. Uh, you're definitely welcome uh, to join us there. You can definitely support the work on those platforms. And for those of you that are supporting this work on those platforms and more, on Gilded, on SensorTube, on Rumble, on BitChute, on Odyssey, on Twitch. Gang, thank you very much for the support. It is in large part because of your support that we're able to do what it is that we are doing. Plutonic Polaris, hi, I'm gonna work. We'll join later. Awesome, Plutonic Polaris, enjoy your work. The The video will be up. Uh, I'm not gonna, I, I was making these videos private when we were uploading to Rumble. Um, when we were just doing Twitch, they were available on Twitch for two weeks to watch the full live streams. And then when we were uploading to Rumble, I was making them private because I wanted to release everything in one shot. But now that we're uploading to Twitch, Rumble, and Odyssey, live stream on all three platforms, I'm not making them private. I might reload them up as, as videos. It's These platforms are doing weird things. They're making a distinction between live streams and videos and uploads. Um, 
so you'll be able to watch these live streams i'm not going to make them private anymore uh right off the bat on uh, on rumble sensor tube on and on twitch <laughs> ryan f sensor tube he says on rumble tupper please glad i'm able to make this live i'll uh, need to re-watch yesterday's i hope it was a juicy one it was a juicy one temporary piece it was very juicy very juicy uh pretty heavy pretty heavy but uh needed to be needed to be dealt with really needed to be dealt with um gang we are recording this on a lapel mic i hope i press button i did press the record button on the lapel mic so this audio will be available on soundcloud.com forward slash chicho as a podcast and it should be available on your favorite podcasting platform we're on twitter we're on minds we're on minds uh, vk gap getter and substack notes uh, you can definitely follow the work there and again gang thank you very much for the support and a huge thank you to the mods for having our backs being here taking care of business on all of these platforms and uh, gilded where we're sharing a lot of information salute gang welcome to our live stream and our community that intro done let's take these guys down and get into some readings nice and chill let's see if we can lose ourselves in some writings right let's see if we can lose ourselves in some writings oh yeah let me do a count i like doing a count right off the bat oh we only got well that can't be correct we got uh, it says we only got one on uh rumble but i already know we got at least three on rumble <laughs> so <laughs> it says we got six people uh, five seven people on sensor two we got supposed to be 15 people on um 16 people and that'll slowly go up uh i'm assuming once notifications go up on uh twitch and we're still one on uh rumble but uh, definitely the count is uh is wrong there i think uh micro twists the 5th of november yeah the the live stream is up on sensor tube we didn't cut the stream on sensor tube so if you go to the live section on sensor tube is there it's on rumble you can watch it there and it's on uh, twitch it was a good live stream needed to be done needed to be done anti-socialist behavior yeah we covered it remember remember the 5th of november indeed one strong temporary piece one strong well it's got to be more than one because i'm on there and temporary piece you're on there and uh ginger no this isn't ginger and we know ryan is on uh rumble as well so that's three but rumble says one so the count is off uh this is actually um water with uh electrolytes electrolytes and water so i was i was extremely busy last week uh so i'm doing a little replenishing of electrolytes and whatnot salute gang and i have my tea as well doop, doop. always have my tea almost always have my tea and i got apples um I'm, I'm eating apples i'm eating apples a lot lately it's good uh, i only got it's so early tonight i just popped up for my evening snooze nice i like afternoon snoozes anti-social behavior conclusion chicho stop the steal rumble is compromised uh, possibly possibly and we're not attached to any platform i i i tell you the truth i really like bitshoot I, I watch a lot of my videos if the content creator is there i watch them on bitshoot um i do enjoy uh no no walnuts today uh, uh ryan on rumble and i don't know if rumble is compromised some people say it is some people say it's not uh for me they've treated us well enough uh and i appreciate that i just don't want to be abused as a content creator as a human being i don't want to be abused sensor tube abuses its creators abuses people like uh, by the way gang I'll, I'll give you a heads up on this um last few videos i've loaded up we're getting a fair bit of views uh, the live stream as well as the little shorts i'm loading up right so we're getting into the top end of the views we usually hit and sensor 2 puts a cap on it so as soon as we hit a certain certain number they 
reduce it again, right? But one thing I've noticed is sensor tube is uh, shadow banning, uh, censoring a lot of comments, like a trip on all sides, right? I I stopped going to where it says, you know, moderation needs to be approved or something like this. I forget what it's called. I stopped going there, but because we were getting a lot of a lot of views on some of these videos, I went, mm, let's see what's in there. What's what's sensor tube censoring? And I went in there. I couldn't believe the number of comments that were censoring. I might have approved one. I didn't bother approving the rest. It doesn't it doesn't matter. Right. I, I mentioned that I wasn't going to moderate that anymore. But one person had commented testing shadow banning. And I and I mentioned and I just commented, I think I said, um, yeah, I'm not banning you. It's censor to like that's what it is. And it's the the comments that were being banned or put on put on a bad list by censor to they were pro Palestinian, pro Israeli, neutral people who didn't care who were talking about different things tons right so anybody that's on sensor tube if you're wondering if your comment is being shared or not uh it's out of my control if if i see certain things uh then i do comment but there's a lot of stuff that is that is even from a member people or members are following us and have been a long time subscribers to my channel on uh sensor tube they're being blocked just so you know just so you know, uh, on sensors of piano. Hey, Chicho, I have a personal situation regarding my career that I want your opinion on. Can I start uh, start it with you? Uh, Keanu, come to our gilded server. I'll, I'll definitely help you out there, like give you my feedback on it. If it's really quick that I can comment right now, I will. But if it's something more intricate, then uh, and it's not bad to get a opinion from other people as well. There's a lot of great people we have on our gilded server that come from different walks of life who have, who have had experience beyond my experience and beyond my knowledge right behind beyond my lens right perspective reality tunnel however we want to think about it right so put it up to our community um we have a question or section or go to general there's got to be a folder there and people have asked questions before regarding uh jobs and careers and stuff like this and people chime in why not it's always good to have different perspectives right uh, as a friend of mine that used to always say um two heads are better than one there's always something someone else knows that you do not know okay usually a lot more than just one okay uh let me take this down let me bring the chat back up plague worship hi she show hope you're doing well i finally catch one of the live streams aha right on right on salutations uh ryan on rumble hmm perhaps i should join the guild of server the guild of server is really good man uh, gang i like it it's the first place i go to uh in the mornings one of the first places i go to i check my email and guild and the gilded server to see you know news and stuff like this <laughs> messages and whatnot so it's pretty good lark bark on sensor too what you doing over there brother <laughs> what up everyone in chicho awesome a steel of lord of iron lord of iron salutations thank you very much for the twitch prime sub subscribe for 12 months greetings from switzerland greetings greetings brother greetings greetings uh, elder god i hope auntie was joking uh, i don't know auntie what was auntie saying evening to, to conclusion ba, 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 ba. of uh, of course eg auntie auntie i don't know what auntie was saying who's auntie what's going on <laughs> temper freeze 100 special bonus bonus this week for unjust yeah. <laughs> did you guys see that thirty-five hundred dollars a load <laughs> money money ching 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 thirty five hundred dollars a load oh, really <laughs> okay gang let's get to some readings let's get to some readings that's the 15 minutes of intro it's good zare salutations hope you're doing well on sensor tube i'm still on sensor tube because having my mouth taped shot is a personal kink of mine <laughs> hilarious <laughs> Dralex, first time chat, salutations, hope you're doing well, welcome. 
to our live stream on Twitch. And gang, do not forget, do not forget. Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. Something that we desperately, desperately need in our societies. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or countless resources available online. Let me bring this back up again. Oh, where's my scent? Oh, hold on a second. What's going on here? Come to the server. Boing. Yeah, Elder God's telling Ryan to come to the server. Okay, gang, let me tell you what we've read so far. So, grab 21 books, right? So far, this is the stack that we've read, and we've got the rest of the numbers in here, right? So, we've got 12 numbers in here. Lord of Iron can uh, stay long, but wanted to drop in and say hi to everyone. Hope everyone is safe and doing well. Thank you very much for dropping in, uh, Lord of Iron, on, on uh, Twitch. Gang, we've read book number six. Book number six is God's Equation. Okay. We read book number 14. Book number 14 is The Tao of the I Ching. Okay. We've read book number 15. We've read book number 15 is Wilhelm Reich and Hell, right? I'm not pulling them out because we want to get to the new readings, right? We've read book number seven. Book number seven was Gore Vidal's Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace. We read book number five. Book number five was Dragon Wing, Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman, right? The Death Gate Cycle. Dun, dun, dun. Ten Genjin. I don't know what that means. Ten Gang. Ten Gang. Uh, book number 21. Complete Golden Dawn. Book number two. Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. Book number nine. Uh, the Real Anthony Fauci by J.F.K. Jr. And book number 10. Uh, Beyond the Green Zone by Dar Jamal, right? So those are the ones we've read. Let's fold these up, put them on the side because we're gonna put them back in the in the hat again after we've done the reading, right? Bronson Maniac, H. E. Cho on Sensor Tube. Do you have any book recommendations that are similar to Perpetual War for Perpetual Peace? Similar to Perpetual. Um, if you want a heavier read that's more domestic oriented, but it does have. A little bit of foreign policy involved in it is uh, Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco's Days of Destruction, Days of Re Revolt. Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt by Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco. And we've read excerpts from it as well, right? Depressing, depressing. And it was a few years ago, and it's predicting what is happening or documenting what is happening with the collapse of the Western world. That's specifically related to the United States economically, right? So perpetual war for perpetual peace. Um, days of destruction, days of revolt, fast read. Perpetual war for perpetual peace, long read, but it also has Joe Sacco is a comic book journalist. He really coined the term comic book journalism with his uh, uh, graphic novels, Gaza, uh, Palestine with his graphic novel Palestine really he coined the term um, comic book journalism right and Palestine gang and he came up with that book when was I have it here where is it um maybe I don't have it here it could be in one of my boxes right no I must be here where is it um I haven't pulled it out for a long time because it's it's really depressing. I, I haven't read the whole thing. I've read about a th third or quarter of it and it's so depressing, so depressing. And you can look at the situation right now and uh, what's going on in the Middle East. Where is it? Oh, here it is right there. This book, okay. Palestine, Joe Sacco, okay, Palestine. This was put out um, 
a long time ago. First printing, uh, 20, uh, 2001. So 22 years ago. I thought it was in the 90s, actually, but uh, 21 years ago. Okay. So 21 years ago, he wrote Palestine. Like, literally, I haven't finished this because it's just... It's just deep. And Joe Sacco's, I've read, I don't know, three or four of his graphic novels, right? Very good. Um, what do you call it? Uh, letters from, uh, anyway, the, the, I forget the name of it. The, uh, the one about uh, Yugoslavia, Sarajevo. Sarajevo was really good. Uh, but I couldn't get through this. I was just like, oh, man, it was breaking your heart. So uh i i've only read about a quarter of it uh, but he's the artist in days of destruction days of revolt and i read all of that uh and it was very good very good highly recommend highly recommend okay okay gang let's pull a number let's pull a number and read excerpts from one of these books what number we're we gonna pick gang what number we're we gonna pick what number are we going to pick? What number are we... Oh, hell to God, you rock on Rumble. To a window from Palestine, summer to ceasefire, to... Right, whatever, yeah, whatever. Put those two books on the buy list. Put... Okay, awesome. I hope you enjoyed them, Branson. They, they are depressing. Nine, nine, nine. <laughs> we already read number nine. Number nine was... Uh, <laughs> and then you found cheese. Oh my god. <laughs> Baseman on Twitch. Hope all uh, all are doing well. So happy for the stream today. Me too. Me too. Gang, I'm pulling a number. No numbers coming in. I'm pulling a number. I'm pulling a number. What do we got? What do we got? Number eight. Number eight. What's number eight? What's number eight? Oh, this is a book I haven't read. This is a book I haven't read. We never make mistakes. Alexander Solozinski. Alex Alexander Solozinski. We never make mistakes. Okay. Nobel Prize winning author of the first circle and cancer ward i haven't sorry it's 19 it's always 19 all the i haven't read anything from this writer okay um it's i've known about this writer okay and i've heard he does amazing writing translated by russian by paul w blackstock Two short novels. Okay. So, gang, what page should we read? Random moose brains on Twitch. Salutations. Salutations. What page should we read, gang? What page should we read? What page should we read? While you think about it, I'm just going to read the back cover. Okay. Alexander. Solozinski, the Nobel Prize winning author of The First Circle and Cancer Ward, first published these two works in the January 1963 issue of the Soviet Library magazine, Novi Mir, which also first published his One Day in the Life of, of Ivan, I've heard about this, Ivan uh, Denisovich, Ivan Denisovich, the book that uh, catapulted him to world attention now translated into english and published in paperback for the first time we never make mistakes comprises two powerful short novels that further confirm zulazinski's place in the tradition of the great russian novelists in quote an accident at uh, krichvka Station and quote, Red Army Lieutenant Velesi 
the name I'm gonna brutalize all these names, man. Uh Velisi Vis Lich Sotov is uh, confronted at his World War II rail junction command with the problem of a of a disturbing army str uh, strangler the young lieutenant's decision and the events leading up to it are presented with the same attention to realistic detail and the quiet emotional impact of one day in the life of ivan denosovich in uh, matronos matrionaz house uh, Zulizinski portrays an old peasant woman who lives in her izba with a goat, a lame cat, and numerous mice. Matria Ona's ten, uh, tenacious and humorous struggle against cold, hunger, and greedy relatives are predicted with un, unspar, unsparing honesty, told by a young man who after her death finally understands who she was right who she was oh thank you a key watches is to give me the right pronunciation soul zen nist in soul 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 zen nist in soul zen Nizdin, Solanistin, 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 Solanistin. Elder Goss coming in with page 38. Let's go to page 38. We're going to read this. Squishy guy, Chicho, your stream is perfectly timed. Just got done with a, a uniform uh, inspection and they F. Uh, f me up for missing a spot shaving oh no hello uh lucas and welcome lucas palm to first time chat nitsen nitsen ah nice thank you pathfinder solas itsen oh man now i'm getting all messed up on sensor too pathfinder solids in itsen nitsen so Solzenitsen, Solzenitsen, Solzenitsen. <laughs> Gang, let's go to page 38. And page 38 is from the first. Uh, da, 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 da. So page 38 is going to be from the first story. Okay. As an incident at Krechetovka Kretsch, station. Okay. Hola milk boy on twitch <laughs> oh my god on twitch is like chicho on russian i'm afraid <laughs> me too <laughs> page 38 gang let's go to page 38 let's go to see if there's a break here um, where we can start off at a good place uh yeah it doesn't look like any there are any sort of segment breaks in this so great okay let's start it from here i'm starting from midway midway from page 37 okay it looks like it might be a good place to start right so we do and we'll read a few pages hopefully there isn't too many crazy words russian words in this okay so an incident at krich tovka station by Soloz Solzhenitsyn, Solzhenitsyn, Alexander Solzhenitsyn from the book, We Never Make Mistakes, and this is the first story, an incident at Krechtovka station, starting at page, in the middle of page 37. Okay. 
But this was impossible. Although it wasn't really bothering him, he straightened his collar with the red square on the green tab and adjusted his glasses. No, Volia, I won't go anywhere else. However, our work is waiting for us. What are we sitting here talking for? He put his cap back on his head, whereupon the expression on his on his open, nub-nosed face became very serene. The girl looked at him sullenly and agreed. Well, all right. Vasily, Vasilich. She sighed. With great difficulty, she raised herself from her, her leaning position and, holding the list in her hand, went out. He blinked, confused and perplexed. Maybe if she would come back and ask him once more, firmly he would agree. But she didn't come back. Zoltov couldn't explain to anyone why he lived in a poorly heated, grimy izba with the old woman and her three grandchildren and slept on the short, hard, uncomfortable chest the enormous cruel mob in the barracks where he lived in 1941 laughed at him on the few occasions when he said that he loved his wife and would remain true to her during the entire war and that he hadn't completed uh, and he had complete confidence in her too his practical minded friends all laughed wildly patted him on the shoulder and advised him not to waste himself since then, he had never spoken to anyone about this, but he was very lonely, especially when he woke up in the, dark, in the dark of the night and thought about his wife and about how things were for her there, far, far away, awaiting the birth of his child and under the German occupation. But it was not because of his wife that he refused uh, Volia, it was because of Pauline, not only because of Pauline either, but because of he really didn't know. Pauline, a dark, short hair woman from Kiev with a dull, lustless face, was the one who lived with Aunt F Frosia and worked at the post office. Whenever he had time, Vasily would go to the post office and read the latest newspapers. The bundles were always a few days late. He would frequently read the news in all the papers, not in just one or two. Certainly, the post office was not a library, and nobody was obligated to allow him to read. But Pauline understood how he felt and always brought the newspapers to the end of the counter where he stood in the cold and read. As with Zoltov, so also was Pauline. The war was not an incessant swing of an ever-moving wheel. Rather, it touched the vital center of her life, now and for all future time. In order to guess what the future might hold, Pauline would open the newspaper anxiously and with trembling hands and would reach for bits of news that would tell her how the war was progressing. They often read together and showed each other the most important places in the news. For both of them, these newspapers replaced the letters which neither ever, ever received. Pauline read carefully through all the reports of military episodes, trying to guess if her husband had been involved. On advice from Zolov, she even read the articles about machine gun and tank tactics in Red Star, the army newspaper, wrinkling her smooth forehead over them. Vasily read aloud to her, excitedly, articles by Ilya Inrenberg. Sometimes he asked Pauline if he could clip some articles for himself from papers that were not delivered. He fell in love with Pauline, her child, and her mother, 
in a way that people who have never known misfortune cannot understand. He always brought some sugar uh, from his own rations for her little son. During all the times that they read the newspapers together, he never once dared touch her pale hands, not because of her husband, nor because of his wife, but because of the sacred grief that united them. Pauline was the person closest to him in Krechtovka. No, on this side of the entire front, she represented the eyes of his conscience and his truth. How could he go to live with Val Valia? What would Pauline think of him? Even without Pauline, he, he could not have casually consoled himself with a, any woman when everything he loved was in danger of being lost. It was also not easy to admit to Valia and to the lieutenants on the shift that there were evenings when he read a particular book, the only one which he had taken from some library during his bustling travels that year and which he always carried with him in his duffel bag. The book was the thick blue first volume of Karl Marx's Capital, printed on the rough paper of the 1930s, which had turned dark with age. During all the five years of this, of his student days, he had dreamt of reading this most desirable book. More than once, he got he got it out of the institute library, and I tried to make a um, synopsis of it. He kept the book out by the semester, by the year, but there was never any time. There were always meetings to attend, social burdens and examinations. Without having finished a single page of his, of his summary, he returned the book at the time of the, of the June examinations. Even when they were studying uh, political economy, the best time to read Capital, the teacher talked him out of it, saying, quote, you'll drown in it, end quote. In, instead, he advised him to use Lapidus as a textbook and to take notes from the lectures. Really, there was not time for anything else. Now in the autumn of 1941, in the glow of great anxiety, Zoltov could find time here in this hole for capital. So he did. When, when off duty in hours spared from his general education or from district, district party committee tasks, in his quarters at Av Avdev's house, in the living room, which was filled with uh, phal phal philandrin and aloe, he sat at a rickety little table. He read by the light of a, a kerosene lamp. A small diesel engine wasn't adequate to provide power for all the houses in the settlement, stroking the rough, rough pages with his fingers. He read it the first time his uh, comprehension, the second for mark, marketing and underscoring, marking and underscoring, and the third for a rapid summary, trying finally to get it all through his head. The worse the news from the war became, the more he buried himself in this thick blue book. Vasily thought that it had, that if he could assimilate everything in just this one volume and memorize all of it in an orderly fashion, he would be invincible, invulnerable, and could not be overcome in any ideological skirmish. But there were few such hours and few such evenings. He made notes on only a few pages because Antonio Ivanova got in the way. She, too, was living at Avdeva's house, having come from Lysok and remaining there in uh, Krechtovaka. She soon became the manager of a dining room. 
she was very enter enterprising and such a buxom and strong woman that there wasn't much scandal connected with her dining room as zotov later found out in exchange for one ruble she covered the bottom of a clay bowl with hot gray greaseless water in which a few noodles were swimming for a deposit of another ruble those who didn't want to drink all this out of the bowl could use a crocked wooden spoon for herself Antonio Ivanova would tell Ad Adeyev to set up the uh, samovar and then would bring bread and fresh butter to her host's table she couldn't have been more than 25 years old but had the appearance of a mature woman with her blood ha blonde hair combed straight back from her face she always greeted the lieutenants warmly and cordially he answered her absent-mindedly and for a long time thought she was a near relative of the owner of the house leaning over his volume he didn't hear her returning late from work and didn't notice that she kept walking through his living room which gave access to her own bedroom from there to the owner's room and back again to her own suddenly she came up to him and asked what are you always reading comrade lieutenant he covered the volume with his notebook and answered her reluctantly on another occasion she asked what do you think isn't it dangerous for me to leave my door unlocked at night zoltov answered her what's there to be afraid of i'm here with my pistol again a few days later sitting over his book he realized that the walking back and forth had ceased as if she had left her room he looked up and was dumbfounded right there in his room she had fixed herself a place to sleep on the divan and was already lying down with her hair falling over the pillow and her bare white shoulders uncovered he stared at her and didn't quite know what to do i'm not disturbing you here am i she asked with a little laugh Vasily got up and his wits end he had already started to walk rapidly toward her but stopped at the sight of her f fat thievish face it revolted him he couldn't speak his throat tightened with uh, revulsion he turned closed the volume of capital found the time and strength to put it back in his duffel bag and rushed over to get his cap and coat which were hanging on a nail on the way he took off his belt which was cumbersome with his pistol on it and carrying it in his hand dashed out the door without a backwards glance he went he went out into the pitch black darkness not even a glimmer of light could be seen neither from the masking paper covered windows nor from the darkly overcast sky and the cold wet autumn wind still whipped and lashed at as it had all day stumbling through puddles holes and mud vasily turned into a side entrance of the station not realizing at first that he was still carrying his belt and pistol he seethed with such helpless resentment that he almost wept as if carried away by the dark stream of his emotions wow this continues really nicely nice read i don't want to read anymore on this because i'm getting lost in it <laughs> which is great 
but we're supposed to be reading excerpts. What a nice read. What a nice read. Aside from the names that are stumbling me, uh, it flows beautifully. And we went to page, by the way, we went to page 42, almost at the end of page 42. Okay, almost at the end of page 42. Bronson Maniac left the sensor tube stream, figured this was the better platform to support from along, alongside Rumble. Indeed, thank you very much. Dr. P, greetings, greetings. Elder God, you've read this? Fantastic read, gang. Nice read. I really liked it. This was number eight. This was number eight. Fun. Fun. Very cool. Very cool. Now, let's read another excerpt. And it's an easy read and it's an easy read oh god a straggler a person or animal that is last in a group to do something or the last to get get to or leave fenix 628 hi chicho glad to finally catch a live stream cheers from alberta cheers brother salutations neighbor Elder God's going book number 19, book number 19, book number 19. Let's roll, let's roll. Let's see what we're going to read. Christian Coppell, salutations from Sensor 2. What do we got? Book number one, book number one. It's a C.S. Lewis book. Which one is it? Which one is it? Fern seed and elephants book number one in the last stream we read I'll pick that up later in the last stream we read a CS look Lewis book as well <laughs> no not CS Lewis he said this is uh, very good it's not uh, Christian based okay it's not Christian based random moose brains I always enjoy these streams and the book assortment yeah so this is a book by CS Lewis uh, CS Lewis fern seed in elephants and other essays on Christianity well I guess it is on Christianity <laughs> okay but I don't remember it I read this a long time ago like so long ago like three and a half decades ago okay and I've read a little bit since then as well I'll just come back to it a little later read a little bit i don't remember it being too heavy on uh, christianity but this is god how many does it have membership and address uh, preface what's the membership okay so there's one two three four five six seven eight there are eight essays in here from what I understand, I was like, I really like fern seed and elephants because it's really about uh, the elephant in the room, right? When people, here's the whole thing. Let's see if it'll remain focused, right? So fern seed and elephant is the essay that really stuck with me because it was really about, uh, the premise was this, that if you're in a room there are people who will be able to see a fern seed in the corner right but they won't see the elephant in the room okay um so should i pick the page in this or you guys want to pick a page and this has got you know 100 and something pages fern seed fern seed and elephant starts on page 104 so maybe we should just start pay reading page 104. Do you guys agree? Should we read just the intro, the beginning part? Um, the efficiency. So the sections are this, membership, learning in wartime. That might be great as well. On forgiveness, that might be great as well. His, uh, historicism, 
the world's last night, religion and rocketry, the efficiency of prayer and fern seed and elephants. 104 sounds good. Elder God, we're going with 104. So, gang, fern seed and elephants, a collection of essays by C.S. Lewis. Okay, and we're going to the last essay. And we're going to read a little bit of it. Okay, just a few pages, probably around three or four pages. Fern seed and elephants. Okay. Starting at page 10. Oops, let me do it over here. Fern seed and elephants. Starting at page 104. Okay. And this is one of the longer essays, so we're not going to read the whole thing. Uh, we'll read until a nice break presents itself. And uh, I don't know when this was written. Do we have the date for this? Uh, no, we don't have the date for when Fern Seed and Elephants was written. I'm assuming it'd be sometime in the 1940s, maybe. Fern seed and elephants. This paper arose out of a um, conversation I had with the principal one night last summer. A book of Alec Vidler's happened to be lying on the table and expressed my reaction to the sort of theology it contained. My reaction was a hasty and ignorant one produced with the freedom that comes after dinner one thing led to another and before we were done i was saying a good deal more than i had meant about the type of thought which so far as i could gather is now dominant in many theolo theological colleges he then said i wish you would come and say all this to my young men he knew of course that I was extremely ignorant of the whole thing. But I think his idea was that you ought to know how a certain sort of theology strikes the outsider. Though I may have nothing but misunderstandings to lay before you, you ought to know that such misunderstandings exist. That sort of thing is easy to overlook inside one's own circle. The minds you daily meet have been conditioned by the same studies and prevalent opinions as your own that may mislead you for of course as priests it is the outsiders you will have to cope with you exist in the long run for no other purpose the proper study of shepherds is sheep not save not save accidentally other shepherds and woe to you if you do not evangelize. I am not trying to teach my grand grandmother. I am a sheep telling shepherds what only a sheep can tell them. And now I start my belating. There are two sorts of outsiders, the uneducated and those who are educated in some way, but not in your way. How you, how, how you are to deal with the first class if you hold views like Lucy's or Sch Schwitzer's or Baltman's or Telich's or even Alec Wittler's, I simply don't know. I see, and I'm told that you see, that it would be it would hardly do to tell them what you really believe. A theology which denies the histor historicity, historicity of nearly everything in the Gospels to which Christian life and affections and thought have been fastened for nearly two millennia, which either denies the miraculous together or more strangely, after swallowing the camel of the resurrection strains at such gnats as the feeding of the multitudes 
if offered to the uneducated man can produce only one one or other of two effects it will make him a roman catholic or an atheist what you offer him he will not recognize as christianity if he holds to what he calls christianity he will leave a church in which he is no longer taught and look for one where it is if he agrees with your ver version he will no longer call himself a christian and no longer come to church in his crude coarse way he would respect you much more if he did the same an experienced clergyman told me that what that most liberal priests faced with this problem have recalled from its grave the late medieval conception of two truth a picture truth which can be preached to the people and an esoteric truth for use among the clergy i shouldn't i shouldn't think you will enjoy this conception which when you have to put it into practice i'm sure if i had to produce um, picture truth to a per per parishioner in great anguish or understand fierce temptation and produce them with this seriousness and fervor which his condition demanded while knowing all the time that i didn't exactly only in some pickwickian sense believe him myself i'd find my forehead getting red and damp and my collar getting tight but that is your headache not mine you have all you have after all a different sort of collar i claim to belong to the second group of outsider educated but not theoretically theologically educated how one member of that group feels i must now tell to tell i must now try to tell you the undermining of the old orthodoxy has been mainly the work of divines engaged in new testament criticism the authority of experts in this discipline is the authority in difference to whom we are asked to give up a huge mass of beliefs shared in common by the early church the fathers the middle ages the reformers and even the 19th century i want to explain what it is that makes me skeptical about this authority ignorantly skeptical as you will all too easily see but the skepticism is the fa father of the ignorance it is hard to perceive in a close setting a close study when you can work up no prima facie confidence in your teacher teachers first then whatever these men may be as biblical critics i distrust them as critics they seem to me to lack uh, literally literary judgment to be in imperceptive about the very quality of the text they are reading it sounds a strange charge to bring against men who have been steeped in those books all their lives but that might be just the trouble a man who has spent his youth and manhood in the minute study of the new testament texts and of other pe other people's study of them whose literary experience of those texts lacks any standard of com uh, comparison such as can only grow from a wide and deep and genuine experience of literature in general is i should think very likely to miss the obvious things about them if he tells me that something is a gospel in legend or romance i want to know how many legends or romances he has read how well his palate is trained in detecting them by the flavor not how many years he has spent on that gospel but i had better turn to examples in what is already a very old comp commentary i read that the fourth gospel is regarded by one school as a spiritual romance a poem not a history or to um, 
poem, not a history, to be judged by the same canons as Nathan's parable, the book of Joah, Paradise Lost, or more exactly, Pilgrim's Progress. After a man has said that, why need one attend to anything else, he says, about any book in the world? Note that it regards Pilgrim's Progress, a story which professes to be a dream and flaunts its allegorical nature by every single proper name it uses as the closest parallel. Note that the whole epic uh, pan panoply of Milton goes for nothing. But even if we leave out the grosser absurdities and keep to Joa, the insensitiveness is crass. Joa is a tale with as few even pretended historical attachments as Job, grotesque in incidents and surely not without a distinct, though of course edifying, vein of typically Jewish humor. Then turn to John, read the dialogue, that with the Sumerian woman as the, uh, at the well, or that which follows the healing of the man born blind. Look at his pictures. Jesus, if I may use the word, uh, bodling with his finger in the dust, the un unforgettable, unforgettable, I have been reading poems, romances, vision literature, legend, myth all my life. I know what they are like. I know that not one of them is like this. Of this text, there are only two possible views. Either this is a um, reportage, though it may no doubt contain errors, pretty close up to the facts, ne uh, nearly as close as Boswell, or else some unknown writer in the second century without known pre uh, predecessors or successors suddenly anticipated that the whole technique of modern novelistic realistic narrative if it is untrue it must be narrative of that kind the reader who doesn't see this has simply not learned to read i would recommend him to read or botch. Here, from Boltan's theory of the New Testament, page 30, is another. Observe in what unsimulated fashion the prediction of the Paros, Mark 838, follows upon the predictions of the Passion 831. What can he mean, unassimilated? Boltan believes that uh, predictions of the parousia are older than those of the passion. He therefore wants to believe, and no doubt does he be does believe, that when they occur in the same passage from um, discrepancy or unassimilation must be pre precipitable between them. But surely he foists this on the text with shocking lack of perception. Peter has confessed Jesus to be the anointed one. That flash, uh, flash of glory is hardly over between the dark prophecy begins. Over before the dark prophecy begins. That the Son of Man must suffer and die. Then this contrast is repeated. Peter raised for a moment by his confession makes his false false step the cushing rebuff get thee behind me follow follows then across that momentary ruin which peter as so often becomes the voice of the master turning to the crowd generalizes the moral all this fault all his followers must take up the cross this avoidance of suffering this self-preservation is not what life is really about then more def definitely still the summons to martyrdom 
you must stand to your tackling if you dis disown christ here and now he will disown you later logically emotionally imaginatively the sequence is perfect only a boltan could think otherwise finally from the same bolt man the personality of jesus has no importance for the kigman either of paul or of john indeed the tradition of the earliest church did not even unconsciously preserve a picture of his personality every attempt to reconstruct one remains a play of subjective imagination so there is no personality of our lord presented in the new testament though what strange process has this learned german gone in order to make himself blind to what all men except him see what evidence have we that we he would recognize a personality if it were there for it is Balt, Baltman contra mundum if anything whatever is common to all believers and even to many unbelievers it is the sense that in the gospel they have met a personality there are characters whom we know to be historical but of whom we do not feel that we have any personal knowledge knowledge by um, acquaintance such as alexander attila or william of orange there are others who make no claim to historical reality but whom nonetheless we know as we know real people falstaff uncle toby mr pickwick but there are only three characters who claiming the first sort of reality also actually have the second and surely everyone knows who they are plato's socrates the jesus of the gospels and boswell's johnson our acquaintance with them shows itself in a dozen ways when we look into the apocalypse apocryphal gospel we find ourselves constantly saying of this or that religion no it's a fine saying but not his that wasn't how he talked just as we do with all pseudo johnsonia we are not in the least per perturbed by the contrast which uh, within each character the union in socrates of silly silly and scabrous titters about greek uh, pedestry with the highest mythical fervor and the homeliest good sense in johnson of profound gravity and melancholy with that love of fun and nonsense which boswell never understood though fanny burry did in jesus of peasant shrewdness intolerable severity and irresistible tenderness so strong is the flavor of the personality that even while he says th things which on any assumption than that of divine incarnation is the fullest sense in the fullest sense would be appallingly arrogant yet we and many unbelievers too accept him as his own valuation when he says quote i am meek and lowly of heart end quote when those passages in the new testament with superficially which superficially and in intention are most concerned with the divine and least with the human nature bring us face to face with the personality i am not sure that they don't do this more than any other any others we believe his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of graciousness and reality which we have looked upon and our hands have handled that was in quotes which is gained by trying to evade or dissipate this shattering um, immediacy 
of personal contact by talk about, quote, that significant which the early church found, significance which the early church found that it was impelled to attribute to the master, master, end quote. This hits us in the face, not what they were impelled to do, but what impelled them. I begin to fear that by personality, Dr. Baltman means what he should call impersonality. What you'd get in a dictionary of national biography, articles, or an obituary, or a Victorian life and letter of Yeshua bar Yosef in three volumes with photographs. End it there. Fernseed, elf, fernseed and elephants. And this was the last essay in this book. Definitely heavy reading. Definitely heavy reading. And I got a feeling when I said the fernseed in the corner, elephant in the room. Maybe it gets into it later, or maybe it's in another essay. I'm not I'm so sure now. <laughs> right? I haven't touched these forever. I haven't touched these forever. Cheryl, how are you doing on Twitch? Hope you're doing well. First time chat. Yo mo mos salutations. Lonely piggy. Yo yo, what's up everyone? Elder God originally titled Modern Theology and the Biblical Criticism 1959. 1959. Cool. Thanks, Elder God. Elder God published 1981 under the title Christian Reflections, which is the name I read it under in 1986. Okay, okay. Cool. Good to know. Good to know. And gang, do not forget, do not forget. Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange, the publisher and journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. Something that we desperately, desperately need in our societies. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or countless resources available online. What should we pick? What should we pick? Or what are we going to pick? Elder God says number 19. What is number 19 anyway? Gurul Asher Bach. Gurul Asher Bach is a twist and a half. Let's go number 19. I want 19. I need 19. Free Julian 19. Free Julian 19. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, we can't read this one. We can't read this one. Elder God. Well, maybe we should read this one. Okay, we gotta read this one. It it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. I'll give you guys one guess what it is. Elder God, what is it? Plutonic plurus. You say it's 18. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Elder God. You you're gonna need a drink on this one. But this one, I can tell you, it's not direct as the other two were please no more with it <laughs> number three c.s lewis screw tape letters <laughs> the hat has spoken elder god the hat has spoken but this is Feels strong, man. Great. <laughs> All the gods like <laughs> Plutonic plurus 18 divided by 6 is 3. Screw tape letters. This isn't direct uh, talk about Christianity. Okay. This book I really like. This is aside from the fiction books that C.S. Lewis has written. And this is sort of fiction, I guess. It's on the boundary. Um, theology thinking books and stuff like this this is 
my favorite book aside from the three sci-fi book out of thought this is my favorite book from cs lewis this was brilliant this is a conversation that a demon superior demon is having with a lower level demon that the lord level demon i'm coming to remove your cs lewis collection of the gods lower level demon is uh has been assigned to corrupt uh human being okay to corrupt the human being okay <laughs> plutonic for cs lewis is also great philosophy of course great philosophy great philosophy hafanen love what screw tape teaches about deception yeah it's this really this really made me sort of take a double take right and i remember trying to look look this up and i believe i came across writings where it says c.s lewis wouldn't uh discuss how he came up with this and why he came up with this right Elder God, this story has been used in a movie, but I will not give the title. Uh, uh, is that the uh, the one that Al Pacino was in? Elder God, is that the one you're thinking about? What page should we read, gang? Screw tape letters. Screw tape letters. What page should we read? What page should we read? And it's got lots of beautiful little line work super cool here's a picture of one demon oh that's page 19 or chapter 19 the one with Keanu <laughs> the one with Keanu <laughs> right what page should we read devil's advocate is for children haha <laughs> letters screw tape letters let's see here let's read this check this out just the beginning part All right. so let's start reading a little bit maybe we'll read let's see if this is broken into chapters you know what we'll go to chapter 19 elder god so we get 19 in there as well yeah it, it was it was trippy right plutonic pluris old brit old brit gang screw tape letters by c.s lewis letters from a senior to a junior devil okay we're going to read chapter 19 or the 19th letter i guess but i'm just going to read the beginning part here okay i'm just going to read the beginning part here quote the best way to drive up the devil drive out the devil if he will not yield to texts of scripture is to jeer and flout him for he cannot bear scorn end quote and that's luther and then from Thomas More, the devil, the prouder sp uh, spirit cannot endure to be mocked. Mock the devil. Mock the devil. Chapter 19. Here's 19. Okay, it's got some nice line work Ni nice line art okay. this is page 82 okay page 82 
and it's just you know what one two three and a half pages it's just three and a half pages okay and we'll read it okay my dear wormwood i have been thinking very hard about the question in your last letter if as i have clearly shown all selves are being their very net are are by their very nature in comp competition and therefore the enemy's idea of love is a contradiction in terms what becomes of my re reiterated warning that ha that he really loves the human vermin and really desires their freedom and continued existence i hope my dear boy you have not shown my letter to anyone not that it matters of course anyone would see that the appearance of heresy into which i have fallen is purely accidental by the way i hope you understand too that some apparently uncomplimentary references to slop gob were purely uh, jocular jocular i really have the highest respect for him and of course some things i said about not shielding you from the authorities were not seriously meant you can trust me to look after your interests but do keep everything on under lock and key the truth is i slipped by mere carelessness into saying that the enemy really loves the humans that of course is an impossibility he is one being they are distinct from him their good cannot be his all his talk about love must be a disguise for something else he must have some real motive for creating them and take taking so much trouble about him taking so much trouble about them the reason one comes to talk as if he really had this impossible love is our utter failure to find out the real motive what does he stand to make out of them that is the insoluble question i do not see that that it can do any harm to tell you that this very problem was a chief cause of our father's quarrel with the enemy when the creation of man was first mooted and when even at that stage the enemy freely confessed that he foresaw a certain episode about a cross our father very naturally sought an interview and asked for an explanation the enemy gave no reply except to produce the cock and bull story about disinterested love which he had been circulating ever since this our father naturally cannot accept his impl he implored the enemy to lay his cards on the table and gave him every opportunity he admitted that he felt a real anxiety to know the secret the enemy replied quote i wish with all my heart that you did end quote it was i imagine at this stage in the interview that our father's disgust at such an unprovoked lack of confidence caused him to remove himself in infinite distance from the presence with a suddenness which has given rise to the ridiculous enemy story that he was forcibly thrown out of heaven since then we have begun to see why our oppressor was so secretive his throne depends on the secret members of his faction have frequently admitted that it that if ever we came to understand what he means by love the war would be over and we would re-enter heaven and there lies the great task we know that he cannot really love nobody can it doesn't make sense if we could only find out what he is really up to hypothesis after hypothesis has been tried and still we couldn't find out yet we 
you must never lose hope. More and more complicated theories, further and further collections of data, richer rewards for researchers who make progress, more and more terrible punishments for those who fail. All this pursued and accelerated to the very end of time cannot surely fail to succeed. You complain that my last letter does not make it clear whether I regard being in love as a desirable state for a human or not. But really, Wormwood, that is the sort of question one expects them to ask. Leave them to discuss whether love or patriotism or celibacy, celibacy or candles on altars or titolism or education are good or bad. Can't you see there is no answer? Nothing matters at all except the tendency of a given state of mind in given circumstances to move in a particular patient as a particular moment nearer to the enemy or nearer to us. Thus, it would be quite a good thing to make the patient decide that, quote, love is good or bad. If he is an arrogant man with a contempt for the body really based on decency, but mistaken by him for purity, and one who takes pleasure in flouting what may most of his followers approve, by all means, let him decide against love. Instill into him an overviewing, overweening uh, eclecticism, and then when you have separated his sexuality from all that might humanize it, weigh in on him with it in some much more brutal and cynical form. If, on the other hand, he is an emotional, gullible man, feed him on minor poets and fifth-rate fifth novelists and the old school until you have made him believe that love is both irres irresistible and somehow intrinsically um, mer meritorious. This belief is not much help, I grant you, in producing casual unchastity, but it is in um, incompar incomparable recipe for prolonged, noble, romantic, tragic adulteries ending if all goes well in murders and suicides failing that it can be used to steer the patient into a useful marriage for marriage though the enemy's invention has its uses there must be several young women in your patient's neighborhood who would r render the christian life intensely difficult to him if only one would pursue persuade him to marry one of them. Please send me a report on this when you next write. In the meantime, get it quite clear in your own mind that this state of falling in love is not in itself necessary, necessarily favorable either to use or or to the other side, or either either to us or to the other side. It is simply an occasion which we and the enemy are both trying to exploit. Like most of the other things which humans are excited about, such as health and sickness, age and youth, or war and peace, it is, from the point of view of the spiritual life, mainly raw material. Your affectionate uncle, Screwtape. That's the lesser demon. And that's screw tape. Right. The enemy is God. Uh, our father is the devil. Uh, the patient is the person that screw tape is um, uh, advising Wormwood to corrupt. Screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. Letters from a senior 
to a junior devil. Fun read. You can consider it to be fiction. <laughs> fun read. Fun read. Interesting read. Interesting read. Um, interesting read as far as I'm concerned. Jack Morris on sensor tube salutations. Christian Coptel salutations. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, Elgot. on the day of a scheduled execution a convicted serial killer gets a psychiatric evaluation during which he claims that's the movie you linked up oh god what is that movie i gotta look into this i'm gonna open this up hopefully it doesn't affect our stream let me check this out what is this have i seen this movie nefarious oh i've seen this long time ago long oh yeah this was trippy this was very trippy this was very good this was very good if i creepy as hell right on the day of a scheduled execution the convicted serial killer gets a psychiatric evaluation during which he claims he is a demon and further claims that before their time is over the psychiatrist will commit three murders of his own yeah 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 plutonic pluris uh family policy alliance nefarious is based on a the book a nefarious plot by christian christian talk show host steve deese which brings to light the devil's dark work in destroying lives written in a style similar to c.s lewis the screw tape letters oh i didn't make that connection before what uh movie is with uh, sean patrick flannery the young indiana jones okay we'll try out on occasion i gotta watch that again i gotta watch that again Piscos on twitch man of culture chiha certainly interesting 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 have you got any uh, have you got some brain food by any chance brother chicho brain food um brain food would be book 19 that elder god keeps on wanting us to read guru escher bach i read a hundred i've read only 105 pages of guru escher bach and this was 25 years ago and i realized i wasn't smart enough to continue reading because i was reading i would i would read a paragraph three or four times and then read a page and a half a couple of pages three pages and then go aha and then have to go back five pages and reread those five pages again so i must have read the 105 pages like three times over so that probably read it equivalent of like three or four hundred pages and i got exhausted at page 105 and i went off on a different reading spree and i read um string thing uh, uh, brian green's uh, string theory uh, elegant universe i read uh, time and the technosphere that we have multiple other books and i never got back to getting back to google lesher bach uh, so that would be my brain food if you want some brain food if you want some brain food you the man show great streamers reward the lonely oh my rumble uh chat had stopped lowly low new york city salutations on rumble salutations on rumble so just some fun little reads gang fun little reads uh for a monday morning why not why not after a map stream that we did right list 999 salutations on twitch uh, eclectic nickel salutations gang we did three readings to c.s lewis because elder god loves c.s lewis 
It's 8.04 in the UK and we read book read book three, one and three and book number eight. Okay, I'm gonna add this to our pile of books that we've read. Right. And what we're going to do is return to these book readings. So so far we've read 12 books, so we've got nine more books to, to read, which is basically gonna be three more book reading streams. Okay, three more book reading streams, uh, which we'll do. Hopefully, we'll finish it off by the end of the year. Next weekend, we're going to do a movie stream. Okay, uh, we have homework. Five movies we're supposed to watch. I hope you've watched the five movies. I got one more movie to watch. So next weekend, we're going to do a movie stream for sure, or next set of streams. We, we and oh yeah, it has to be Sunday. Um, as long as Cheryl's available, I'll check with Cheryl and now Lagat. So most likely next Sunday we're going to do our movie stream, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. I'll try to fit in maybe two. I'm going to try to fit in a math stream in there. Like part of it. Plutonic players, you watch Tropic Thunder in Bulgaria. <laughs> How did that little like you go? <laughs> oh, Elgar, you're all done. Nice, nice. I just have one more to watch. I just have one more to watch. Aside from that, gang, uh, nice chill stream after yesterday's heavy, heavy stream, right? Um, so I'm going to do my little outro. Uh, our recording on Lapal mic is still going fantastic, and we're live streaming all three platforms. Fantastic. Gang, if you want to know what this work is about, I'm on Patreon, Substack, Subscribestar. We do have a Gilded server. You're definitely welcome. Join us in Gilded. We are live streaming on Twitch, Rumble, and SensorTube. And this live stream in its entirety should be up on Bitchu and Nasi, let's say, by next week. Okay. And I'll probably might reload it up again on Rumble and on uh, SensorTube as well because uh, they stay in the live section, not on the video section. Weird, weird, weird. Uh, the five movies we're supposed to watch, gang, Elder God's putting it up. The Dirty Dozen, Tropic Thunder, Muppet movie, Cocaine Bear, and the one set in Ireland. <laughs> awesome. I can't remember what it is either. <laughs> and Elder God got through Cocaine Bear. <laughs> Hilarious. Gang, we are recording this on Alpal Mike. It should be available on SoundCloud. We're not friends anymore. <laughs> got you to watch cocaine bear and read excerpts from three <laughs> three c.s lewis books <laughs> this off mate he says <laughs> too funny too funny um gang we are on twitter minds vk gab substack notes and getter you can definitely follow the work there for those of you who are supporting this work on all these platforms and more gang thank you very much for the support and the mods mods thank you very much on the stream we had uh Eldegod, uh cheryl and plutonic plurist and yesterday we had nicholas poppin as well and i think there was one or two other ones there uh mods were there so salute thank you very much for having our backs gang thank you very much for participating in this live stream uh nice and chill nice and chill salute salute mr 22 just woke up uh gonna have to watch the replay thanks chicho have a good one you too you too gang i'll see you guys next weekend okay no pork cooked we got off discord pork cook is asking if there's a, we do have a discord server still but discord was censoring uh, servers for no reason in the last two three years for sharing information just questioning talking <laughs> being human so elder god gave us a heads up and we left discord and we're on gilded very nice gilded um, elder god the fifth movie is the banshee of inshirin um the banshee of Inshirin. Gang, I'll see you guys next week and on Gilded. Okay, I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your week. Bye, everyone.